Well, we're back doing some wiring stuff again. We've uh, we've paused on that for a little while uh, while we've been doing other things through the summer, but we want to get back on doing some more wiring stuff. We have mentioned in previous videos some of the concepts behind uh, block control uh, for DC railroads. And uh, we want to really take a much deeper dive into that now. For years and years and years and years, block design was the only way that you could run multiple trains on a DC railroad before there was DCC. And there's still a lot of people out there running their railroads strictly on DC and even using some pretty complicated block designs in order to run multiple trains all from just uh, DC power supplies. So before we get too far down into the weeds on this thing, we need to cover a few of the most basic concepts when it comes to block design, block functionality on a DC railroad. So let's start with basic basic, the most basic system, a the typical 4x8 oval railroad or the the loop of track underneath the Christmas tree as it as it were. So this is just a simple oval of track. I've indicated both rails, one red and one black. Uh, it's important to keep track of the polarity on your rails and most people choose to use a red and a black wire and uh, follow some kind of a protocol where they say well the inside of the oval is one color and the outside of the oval is the other color. I've always used black inside red outside other people go the other way around red inside black outside it really doesn't matter at all. Now, of course, what you do is you connect one of these wires to your power supply track voltage, either the plus or minus on the track voltage, hook the other wire to the other side. And then, of course, the other end of the wire is connected to the tracks. Should you want to run a second train, the easiest way to do that is just add a second oval inside or outside the other oval. And, of course, that means having a second power supply to run the second train as well. I've seen plenty of railroads that are just this simple. Uh, if they want to have two trains, three trains, four trains, they have three tracks, four tracks. There's a, a famous railroad, I think it's called Northlands. It's a big public display. And they have something like 80 different trains running. And they just have 80 power supplies to 80 tracks with 80 trains running on them with no interconnections between them whatsoever. However, when we want to play trains, we usually want to have some sort of a interconnection between these two tracks. So I've laid in a little crossover here between the outside loop and the inside loop. The problem here, as you can see, is if I've got this connected to two different power supplies, I just shorted the two power supplies uh, to each other. If I open the throttle on the A power supply, it's sending power to both tracks. And conversely, if I open the throttle on the B power supply, it's sending power to both tracks as well. So the obvious conspicuous solution here is isolate uh, the tracks as they go through the crossover. You can uh, buy plastic rail joiners and replace the rail joiners between the two switches with plastic rail joiners. And that way your A pack, your outer loop power supply and your inner loop power supply are not connected together. And a train crossing across will simply cross over from the, uh, the A power supply over to the B power supply. So assuming that the direction switches are set in the same direction on both power supplies, uh, and both throttles are open, your train should just go across that gap and you won't even notice. It'll just transfer from one power supply to the other and keep right on moving. Now, in a previous video, we talked about common rail. And so uh, a way to simplify this would be to, instead of isolating both rails, only isolate one rail, in this case, the red rail. So in this case, all of the black rails are all tied together and surprisingly, this still works. Even though we've got two complete power supplies, we're simply tying the output, uh, track output of two of the poles of both power supplies to the black rail, and then 
the uh, output from one power supply to the inner red rail and the other power supply to the outer red rail. And it'll behave exactly the same as it did when both rails were isolated. Now there's a couple of important things to keep in mind here. This will only work if we're using two completely separate power supplies. Now you can buy a dual throttle power supply like this Tech 7, which are actually two complete power supplies in one box. But if you have a single power supply with two throttles, this won't work. It'll, it'll malfunction severely. Moreover, uh, both power supplies would have to be DC power supplies if you're trying to connect, say, a DCC system this way, where uh, one of the loops is DC and the other one is DCC, uh, that's going to have a lot of complexity to it, and you certainly can't do common rail. Okay, now we've got a crossover to move from the outer loop to the inner loop. We're not going to have a lot in the way of operations unless we also have a crossover to move from the inner loop back out to the outer loop. But again, all you have to do is isolate that red rail at the crossover point, and it'll work just fine. Now here's something to keep in mind. Remember I said both throttles would have to be open and uh, set to the same direction, or the train won't cross over the crossover. It will either short out or come to a stop because the throttle's not open. But if we're trying to run a second train on the inner loop while we bring the train from the outer loop into the inner loop, well, the two trains are likely to crash into each other. So, unless you're Gomez Adams, you probably don't actually want to crash your two trains into each other. So this is where we want to have more control over a second train. So let's add four more gaps on either end of the crossover points, and this breaks our railroad out into four blocks. So let's call those A1 and 2 and B1 and 2. And what we want to do is connect each of these four blocks to our power through four single pole double throw switches like the one here in the picture. So terminal number one here is connected to the output of one of our power supplies. Terminal 2 here is connected to the red rail on our railroad in the block that we're controlling. And Terminal 3 is connected to the output from our other power supply. Keeping in mind that our common rail is connected to both power supplies at the, uh, the other output terminal, which are just tied together and then connected to our common rail. So we don't have to worry about cutting gaps or changing the common rail at all. It's simply the common rail. So let's run some trains here. Let's say we've got our toggle switch uh, set on block B2 to uh, throttle number one, and we've got the toggle switches that control blocks A1 and B1 set to the other position for the power supply number two. We can now run trains from A1 through the crossover into B1, back through the crossover and back into A1, all from the second power supply. Now let's throw our block control switch for A2 over to the second power supply and set our turnouts to the straight position, the tangent position. And now our second throttle is connected entirely to the outside loop and any train running on the outside loop is being run from the second throttle. We can also take our block control switch for uh, B1 and set that to the first power supply and now the first power supply is entirely controlling the train on the inner loop and the second power supply is entirely running the train on the outside loop. I'm assuming at this point that you are confused. Uh, you should be confused because it's confusing. So go back to the beginning and, and watch it again and uh, watch it a third time if necessary. Eventually this will sink in because I think I've described it accurately. I hope so. Uh, or uh, if not, leave a comment in the comments and I'll try to resolve those issues. Needless to say, there's a lot more to block control than, than what we've described here. This, believe it or not, is just the basis of how the whole thing works. 
but you may be uh, on a large model railroad, you may have, I don't know, 40 of these blocks. Um, but you still probably only have two different power supplies uh, and then just a single toggle switch to control each block between uh, the A cab or the B cab, whichever one you're using. So I hope you're going to want to follow along as we get down into the weeds on some of this stuff. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, do consider subscribing because then you can be notified if you set your notification bell every time a new one of these videos goes up. Moreover, there's like a thousand other videos here on the channel that you may want to watch. So uh, the easy, easy, easy peasy way to subscribe is by clicking on the upcoming blue button. Zoink! Right there, the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. I hope you didn't find it boring, and Karen and I will see you here on Sunday. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.